have you ever noticed that whenever you're watching a movie about marijuana, the lead character of the movie is always presented in a stereotypical stoner type. They're always presented as being slightly slow, slightly dumb, slightly stupid, and lovable. Kind of like your Cheech and Chong, or your Harold and Kumar, who go to White Castle. It's always the same character type. Have you ever wondered why they do that? Welcome to I Believe TV, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects and techniques the media and government use to keep you in the dark. And today I'm going to be speaking to you about stoner stereotypes. It is very important for the government to present marijuana smokers in a certain light in order for them to justify the laws. And so it's not just the, the movies that show marijuana smokers as being slightly stupid. It's also the media themselves. You'll notice that whenever there is an interview on marijuana, they never ever bring in somebody who actually knows anything about marijuana. They'll find a person who smokes marijuana and who speaks in a lot of wows and schwows and hey man, cool, yeah man. And that's basically all that they'll present. So when the person is asked the question, they cannot respond to that question. On the other side of the panel, they will always have some scientific expert who will come out and start making claims about technical parts of the brain that nobody else can understand except them. It's just mumbo jumbo, even to the people who are watching at home. And then he comes out and says, oh, because nobody can refute what I've said, because no one can obviously understand what he said, he must be right. And so he sounds very impressive and very formal. Now, I've spoken before in the past about how the government uses science in order to brainwash people. The government themselves ban marijuana. They are the authority that bans marijuana. So therefore scientists cannot study marijuana. If a scientist wants to study marijuana, they have to actually approach the government. Now the government doesn't say, oh yes, you can just go and study marijuana, just do whatever you want, grow as much as you want, do whatever you want with, with the marijuana. They actually tell the scientists what to do and they pay the scientists in the form of a government grant to study it. The government determines the entire parameters of the test, they determine the apparatus, they determine what can be studied, how it can be studied, and they determine at what point the study will end. This is why you'll notice that all of the studies out there are done on THC, synthetic man-made laboratory produced THC or CBD. Now during apartheid they did the exact same thing. The white racist government hired white racist scientists to study black people and to say that black people were stupid. Uh, earlier on, before we had apartheid, you had other governments saying the same thing about women. You've had people saying the same thing about gays. Now if I came out and I said in terms of a stereotype that all black people are stupid, if I said all women deserve to be barefoot pregnant and in the kitchen, if I said all gays have got AIDS, I would be accused of being a hater, I would be accused of hate speech, I would be accused of being a racist, I would be accused of being a misogynist, and I would be accused of being homophobic. Yet when the exact same categories are applied to marijuana smokers, oh, all marijuana smokers are stupid, all marijuana smokers are criminals, all marijuana smokers are fill in the blank, whatever you want. Um, when the exact same category is applied by the exact same people who would moan if I was to, to make a generalization about them, all of a sudden it's no longer an insult and it's not offensive. The media and the government work together hand in hand in order to ensure that the only image that the general public will ever get of marijuana users is that of being stupid, dumb criminals. Now in any single organization, in any single category of human beings, you're always going to find very intelligent people and you're always going to find very dumb people. Now if you wanted to have an intelligent conversation over a specific topic, and let's say the topic was the economy, and you wanted to make it appear as if the government didn't know anything about the economy, would you ask Trevor Manuel to come and speak about the economy? Or would you ask Julius Malema 
to come and speak about the economy. Obviously, you would choose Julius Malema because he doesn't know about it. Now, it's the same with marijuana, and that's why the media always chooses a person who doesn't know anything about marijuana. They'll choose the people who know the least about marijuana to put on TV, and that way they can keep the public in the exact same uh, mental position in terms of how they perceive marijuana and how they perceive marijuana smokers. Everybody's going to say to you, as soon as you make a claim about marijuana, what are the facts? We want to know the scientific facts. Please present us the empirical studies. And the empirical studies are the highest form of science. Even Albert Einstein said so. Empirical means the actual studies that involve actual human beings, actual herb marijuana, actual use of that marijuana by the human beings, real life situations. These are the studies that people want to know about and these are the studies that can influence the way in which people uh, perceive marijuana smokers. The document that I use is called the report and it's a very very important document. The report, uh, Cannabis, the Facts, Human Rights and the Law basically summarizes all of the empirical studies that have been conducted on actual marijuana dating back to 1836. These are official government studies. They are not grant paid scientist studies where the government was able to manipulate the parameters. They were actual empirical studies based on populations of people and individuals that either used marijuana and in some cases individuals who had never ever smoked marijuana before in their lives, novice users, to see the effects that marijuana had on them. Once you know the facts, you can then answer the questions and we can change the perception of marijuana in the eyes of the public. So I'm hoping that once you've seen this video, you'll understand that we need to change the way in which we act and we need to change the way in which we are perceived. If you like marijuana, that's great, but don't do an interview unless you actually know the facts regarding marijuana so you can answer the questions. Otherwise, we're not going to get very far because the media is going to keep presenting us in the exact same light as being dumb, stupid stoners.